Let's dive right into DaVinci Resolve 20, which has lots of AI-aided features. You're watching Synity, supported by b &H and CVP. Hi, everybody here from NAB 2025 at the Blackmagic Design booth. I'm here with Simon Hall. Simon is the expert on DaVinci Resolve. He actually gave me and Johnny a workshop in the past <laughs> on DaVinci. I, I guess we didn't practice enough. Honestly, I need a catch up. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, after this update, I think everybody needs a catch up. I, I think, you know, we've got 150 new features. So it's the big 20, DaVinci 20 uh, beta. Public beta is out now. Public beta is out now, yeah. So. I see a lot of AI. AI is the buzzword, has been the buzzword for the last couple of years, I guess. Uh, and now it's also really, you know, getting into DaVinci Resolve. So run me through the main things that are new. Okay, so with regards to AI, yeah, our AI, again, like with us, we never want to replace the person in the seat. We just want to make things quicker. So some of the, I mean, there's so many different ones. Uh, one of the ones that I really like, there is the, um, AI in Telescript. So if you have a script um, and then sort of a really long interview like this, um, you could basically, yeah, use the AI, use the script and it will chop it up for you and drop it into a timeline. So it kind of pre-edits it according to the script. If there's multiple takes, so if I mess up and say something again, it'll stack the multiple takes up in the timeline so you can easily des decide which one. And that's based on the transcript, the automatic transcript? Um, it's not. You can use the automatic transcript, but you can use any script that you want. Uh, and again, the thing that I love, you don't have to have like a fully formatted script. Um, like today, I've just been using a plain old text file that's just got a few paragraphs uh, and it recognizes it and chops it up. So yeah, you can use our audio transcription. So that's a good way of doing it. Um, but again, yeah, if you have a set script initially, yeah, you can just use that. If I have multiple cameras, I can also use that tool? Yeah, so if you've got multiple cameras, you can use that because you can use the same script for the second camera angle and then sort of layer them together. Um, but also what you could do is if you've got a multi-cam, we've got the multi-cam um, smart switch and AI tool. Um, so that's really clever as well. So again, if we, you've got the two of us talking here, it'll look for the mouths that are moving and then just do the multi-cam because um, it'll sense who's talking. So it'll auto cut that for you as well. It'd be very useful, you know, like we do our weikly podcast on three cameras using ATEM Mini to record and do like the live switching stuff. But then of course you always need to do um, corrections in post. Yeah. So if, you know, even the, if the switching kind of could be automated, you might not even need to use the ATEM, right? You could do that in post. Yeah, pretty much. If you're not doing a live stream and you're just recording, yeah, yeah you could just do it in post. Take the ISO recordings, they're all synced via timecode, make a multicam clip, and then yeah, get the AI to chop it up for you. Very cool. Okay, what, what else is there? Um, well, we've got the one that, that's kind of everybody likes. We've got the voice conversion tool. So again, using AI, like a lot of other AI can do, is you can change somebody's voice. So we have some built-in models. Um, but again, you can, uh, there's also a learning module as well. So you can get Resolve to learn a voice and then basically, yeah, change somebody's voice. So, you know, people may not like my Yorkshire... <laughs> My Yorkshire. It'd be funny to demo this here. Actually, it would be. It would, yeah, put it put it on me. Um, make me sound like an American. Now, I must say is what we always say is try and get. You know, me being English, if you use our built-in sort of American tool, it kind of works. You could get rid of my accent, so yeah, I yeah. can sound English. Yeah, finally. you can. You can sound yeah. English. More sophisticated. <laughs> yeah. So I, there's that one, um, and then. There's the um, music editor trim as well, which saves me a, a huge amount of time. Because you know, if you've got a longer music track than your edit or a slightly shorter one, what you ended up doing is going along, see if you could get a convenient loop point and then just chopping it and extending it. But now with our tool, you can simply just drag a music track short. That's useful. And uh, yeah, and it'll just sort of auto mix it for you. So it'll kind of work out where the loop points are and go, right, loop from here. So you can either trim or extend. Very cool. That's, I mean, we will talk mostly about audio now, a uh, little bit about editing. Any, any more editing tools that you edit? Um, so, I mean, one of the things that I love, um, we've just got a lot of tools that will save you a huge amount of time. Um, 
I do love the ability now, you've kind of got free reign over your media pool. So if you want to kind of stack your clips in an order before you add them to the edit, you can sort of break apart the media pool. So you can have thumbnails and you can drag them around and stack them up together and then drop them all into the timeline all in one go, which I love. You've got, um, we've got uh, source timeline. So again, what editors really want, love to do is you know, you pull some edit selects into a timeline and then you want to edit from one timeline into another. Uh, and the new source timeline feature in the edit page allows you to kind of work between a timeline that you've already built and a timeline you're going to edit into. And it makes the switching seamless so you can grab a bit of that timeline, drop it into that timeline. Um, and keyframing, we've got a new keyframe editor, which is brilliant because um, a lot of the time, you know, if I'm sort of animating graphics, uh, and that's, again, just throw that in there. We can read Photoshop layers now. So you can, if you've got a PSD file, you can unstack it and see all the layers. Um, but, you know, to get kind of really intricate keyframing before in Resolve, you could sort of do it, but it got a little bit fiddly. But now we've got a full keyframe editor. It's a big window. It's got uh, sort of the splines that look, look a bit like the splines in Fusion. So you can start to do some really kind of complex animations that quite often would will require you to go into the Fusion page. But now you can do it in the edit page. Anything, anything new for the cut page? Um, the cut page, again, obviously there's some of the AIs um, is in there. There's some very clever trimming things now. So you can live right to the timeline in the cut page just by clicking and dragging over a thumbnail. It'll kind of do a live right to the timeline, much like the speed editor does, but you can just do it with a mouse now, which is really cool. Um, one of the things that I really love about the cut page, we've got full portrait mode now because we found the cut page as a lot of people used it for the fast turnaround social media stuff. Uh, and now it's got a full portrait window. So it runs all the way down the side of one screen. So you don't have to be kind of peering in. Fusion also got a, quite a few updates, right? Yeah, so we've got deep image compositing as well. So you've got EXRs with deep image compositing, you can use those. So again, you can, again, the best way of describing it, you, you know, deep imaging, you don't have to worry about the order in which sort of things are led. You can get into them and tweak them. There's a huge amount of information in there. Um, we've got uh, multi-layer pipelining. So again, you can have uh, EXRs or PSD files with multiple layers. You can just throw them all into one node and you don't have to worry about the way they're layered. You've got a full flexibility on that um, in the inspector. So it's not like before where you have to kind of merge them all together. We've got a really cool ve new vector warping tool, which is good. So if you've got sort of um, shapes that you need to composite onto something. So, you know, your CineD logo there, if you want to composite onto your sleeve, it's a complex shape that yeah. bends and moves. We've got a new vector warping tool that will use a vector to fully track this. So you can kind of composite with that. I can show up with just a black shirt next time. You can show up with a black shirt and well, you can do it all in post. <laughs> Pricing and availability, I guess the update is still free if you have the studio version already, right? Yep, the update is free for the studio version. It is beta, so we always point that out to people. So again, you know, if you obviously if you're doing customer work, we recommend having a separate machine for your beta. Uh, but yeah, it's publicly available. Um, there's a couple of things that aren't available at the moment because they're still being worked on. Um, you know, there was a little bit of a demo about the scene extension. So we got scene extension at AI in there. Um, we're still working through that at the moment because there may be a little bit of pricing involved um, and we're still working through that. So that's one thing that's not in the public beta. But, you know, most of the things that you saw on the video and you can see here today, they're available to try at home. Grant mentioned in passing that there might be a price tag to updates in the future? Potentially, yes. Um, you know, with Resolve, you see the amount of development that we do for it. And, and you know, what we probably know is when, when on a company that likes to put a barrier in front of people and cost shouldn't be that barrier. Um, but yeah, with the amount of development that goes on in Resolve, um, it may be in the future that we may charge a nominal sum to up upgrade. When that is, I have no idea when that will be. Last question, because you just reminded me when you mentioned the extension feature. Yeah. Um, I saw in the booth you were mentioning that there is no AI training with your data. Is that right? Like, uh, there's no, no, there's no. Um, one thing you can do with the um, voice replacement that you can give it a voice sample to train it. But at the moment, no, everything else 
there's no training with so we need to worry about you know editing our footage footage that our footage will go into a training pool of black magic design for ai models no it won't do that the ai stuff actually they said it goes up to the cloud to learning but the actual content drops into your resolve project so it's on your machine okay good to know thank you thank you My pleasure. thank you simon Stay tuned to Synody for a lot more videos from the Blackmagic booth and anywhere else at NEB. And if you missed that, we had a video on the Pixies 12K on the handles for the Pixies series. And we'll also do one about the immer uh, Ursa Cine immersive workflow for the Vision Pro. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and like and subscribe. Thanks.